Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and uh, good evening to all our media colleagues and to those watching regionally as well as locally in St. Vincent and the Grenadines and around the world. This evening, the Prime Minister of St. Vincent and the Grenadines, Dr. Ralph Gonzalez, will address the media about uh, CELAC and CARICOM-led initiatives uh, surrounding the controversy, uh, the ongoing controversy between Guyana and Venezuela. Uh, without holding you any much longer, I will hand you over to Prime Minister Dr. Ralph Gonzalez. Thank you very much, and good evening, members of the media. I apologize formally for having you come out nearly 7 o'clock on a Saturday evening. But the circumstances have impelled me to have this briefing. So through you, to inform the people of St. Vincent and the Grenadines, the Caribbean, and the world. Uh, regarding an important initiative for face-to-face -face dialogue between the presidents of Guyana and Venezuela, uh, that meeting, that dialogue, face-to-face, is, to, is scheduled to take place on Thursday, the 14th, here in St. Vincent and the Grenadines. This discussion would relate to matters consequential upon the border controversy which exists between Guyana and Venezuela. I did not intend to address this matter until early in the week, but there has been a report on it out of Venezuela and also out of Guyana, and I understand that the letter which I wrote earlier today and sent to President of Anali of the Cooperative Republic of Guyana and President Maduro, Nicolas Maduro of the Bolivarian Republic of Venezuela, that that letter was released by the government of Guyana. Now, there's nothing untoward about such a release. It is just that I, I, I didn't intend to address the matter until Monday. I want to give some backdrop and some context. Since the 28th, 29th of September, I've been seeking in my capacity as pro tempore president of the community of states of Latin America and the Caribbean to have a dialogue between both presidents of two great countries, Venezuela and Guyana, and both of them who are my personal friends. And both countries belong to CELAC. Of course, there's a time and season for everything. There's a time to dance and there's a time to sit down. There's a time to love and there's a time to fear. There's a time to sow and there's a time to reap. And there's a time 
to keep quiet, there's a time to talk. And there's a time for peace, and there's a time for fighting. And all the circumstances have made it possible for us to have this dialogue. The Caribbean community and leaders within the community have played an important role in assisting to bring it, this venture together. So too, and in particular, the Prime Minister of the Commonwealth of Dominica, who is the chair of CARICOM. So too, President Lula, my dear friend from Brazil, President Miguel from Cuba, another of my friends, several other leaders whom I considered important in this exercise to assist in facilitating this dialogue and this meeting. Last evening, CARICOM held a heads of government meeting, and certain matters were crystallized. And I was accorded a particular role in this particular venture. As some of you know, that I had traveled a few weeks ago to Venezuela to address precisely this matter with President Maduro. And I've had several conversations too with President Ali on the phone and face to face. Yesterday, afternoon, I had discussions with the foreign minister of Venezuela who came to St. Vincent and the Grenadines to see me on this matter. And this morning, before I sent out the letter, I had discussions with President Ali and Vice President Jack Deo from Guyana and with President Maduro. I have been also in communication with the Cuban government, with the office of the Secretary General of the United Nations. His Excellency Antonio Guterres, and I've been in communication with the offices of the President of Honduras, who will take over the presidency pro tempore of CELAC at the beginning of March here in St. Vincent and the Grenadines when we have our meeting of SILAC, and I've been touched also through communication by, with this letter, with the immediate past president pro tempore of SILAC, the government of Argentina, there's a new president, as you know, elections are quite recent, and uh, sometime this afternoon, I spoke with the Foreign Minister of the Federative Republic of Brazil and to see if we could ascertain the presence of President Lula here on Thursday. But a formal letter has already been sent to President Lula. That is the, the background and the, the, the context. There are lots of details, um, really. 
what are we trying to do? And I think perhaps the best thing is to just read the letter or the substance of it. Um, I, I think that on a particular website, it has already been posted, as I said, out of Guyana. And this, this letter I wrote today, sent today to Orphan and Nicholas. Uh, the letter reads, the leaderships of the community of states of Latin America and the Caribbean, CELAC, and the Caribbean community, CARICOM, consider that it is necessary and desirable to facilitate the convening of a meeting in St. Vincent and the Grenadines on Thursday, December the 14th, 2023, at 10 a.m., between the presidents of the Cooperative Republic of Guyana and the Bolivarian Republic of Venezuela on matters consequential to the border controversy between these two great countries. Both of you have agreed with me for such a meeting to be held under the auspices of CELAC, of which St. Vincent Grandin is the pro tempore president, and CARICOM, of which the current chairman is the Commonwealth of Dominica. Both of you have also requested the distinguished presence of the esteemed president of the Federative Republic of Brazil, his Excellency Luis Inacio Lula de Silva. An invitation is accordingly being sent to our dear brother Louis, Lula. Given the recent events and circumstances attendant upon the border controversy, the leaderships of CELAC and CARICOM have assessed in the interests of all concerned, including our Caribbean and Latin American civilizations, the urgent need to de-escalate the conflict and institute an appropriate dialogue face-to-face -face between the presidents of Guyana and Venezuela. Both of you have concurred with this assessment in the quest of peaceful coexistence the application and respect for international law and the avoidance of the use of threats of force. Both of you are on public record of committing to the Caribbean as a zone of peace and the maintenance of international law. Experience has taught humanity that it is mature, wise and preferable for leaders of nations which are in conflict to speak to each other calmly, respectfully, and with patience in order to avoid an escalation into threats or the use of force. To be sure, the resolution of old controversies in challenging contemporary times is never easy. For leaders, it is strenuous, but a strenuous life pursued in peace is to be preferred to one of ignoble ease in perpetual conflict and viol or violent encounter. We are all aware that the government of Guyana is seeking the resolution of the border controversy through the processes of the International Court of Justice, which is currently seized of the matter. We are cognizant, too, that the government of Venezuela has rejected the path of the ICJ as the modality for resolution. The Parliament of Guyana has unanimously instructed the President of Guyana not to discuss the border controversy with the government of Venezuela. The people of Venezuela have advised overwhelmingly in a consultative referendum on December the 3rd, 2023, their government not to accept the jurisdiction of the ICJ in the matter of the border controversy. Clearly, each of you has to summon the proverbial wisdom of Solomon, the patience of Job, and the foresight of all the ancient prophets to engender good neighborliness in peace, justice, security, and prosperity for all concerned. There is thus much for each of you to raise and or discuss on matters consequential to the border controversy, even as you respect the advice or more of your respective peoples and parliament and national assembly. Please be advised that each of you is free to suggest requisite modalities of the face-to-face -face dialogue, inclusive of the role of any named interlocutor or interlocutors. Both Prime Minister Roosevelt Skerritt, Chair of CARICOM, 
and I, as pro tempore president of CELAC, are available to assist in whatever constructive way each of you may suggest or require. The government of St. Vincent and the Grenadines is pleased to host each of you, Prime Minister Skerritt, President Lula, and any other recommended leader or leaders of the region and their respective delegations. Time is of the essence. Let us all resolve to make this historic gathering a successful one. So much is at stake for our Caribbean and Latin American civilization. All the best to both of you, your respective families, governments, and peoples. Sincerely yours, Ralph, Prime Minister St. Vincent and the Grenadines. No. It is very easy in a matter like this for persons to vent anger, to beat their chest and declare in favor of this or that position. Well, that may be something quite self-satisfying, but that does not aid a solution. The fact of the matter is this, our region has been and is a zone of peace, and we like to keep it like this. If open conflict and force emerge, the implications are horrendous to contemplate. It would affect negatively everyone in the most distant villages in our Caribbean and also in Latin America. I don't think I can put it any higher than that. So, we are making all the requisite preparations for St. Vincent to host this meeting. I've already put in train all the relevant um, issues, organizational, security, um, the, 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 the particular details of hosting arrangements of one kind or another. We have begun to work on those. We don't have a lot of time. And in the case of St. Vincent and the Grenadines, we, we are on the way to present our estimates to the House on the 19th of December. We are, the estimates are going to go to the printry sometime tomorrow. On, on the 15th, we'll have the, 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 com the committee of the whole house, the finance committee. Um, and when I leave you here tonight, I have to go over for one last time the estimates before they go to the printer tomorrow. So it's a, it's a long day and it's a long night, but we have to take the time to deal with these large strategic questions. I, I want to thank all my colleagues in CARICOM and in CELAC who have helped to get us to this stage. Um, a few days ago, of course, at a meeting of Mercosur, of which President Lula is, is president, he insisted that his brother Ralph accelerate the work which we have been doing to get this going. So here we are at this particular juncture. Don't know if you have any questions. I, I'm, 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 I really, as I, as I said to you, I, I, I wouldn't have called you out at this hour, but it would have been strange if I'm hosting the meeting and information is being about and, I, and you haven't heard from me. Um, and people 
people are calling me from all about. They, and this matter has been exercising the, the interest the, the, of, of other countries. I happen to know that high officials from the United States government have been in touch with CARICOM leaders, including um, Prime Minister Skerritt. Two nights ago, the, the new Foreign Secretary in the United Kingdom, Lord Cameron, former Prime Minister Dave Cameron, was in touch with me. We had a conversation um, as to what we are doing and how we are going forward. So this matter has been of, of great interest. It is a weighty matter. And we have to address it with the seriousness that it deserves and not with any flippancy. It's easy to play clown with any matter, but this is a very serious issue. Thank you. All right, at this time, We'll invite questions from the media. Okay, you can just take the mic, indicate, indicate who you are and your organization, and your question. Good evening, all. This is Halit John with the Agency for Public Information. Um, Prime Minister, as much as this is a question, it is also something that I want to draw reference to. Now, you have mentioned here that uh, CELAC, um, we are likely to give up our tenure in March. And at a time like this, for such a time as this, um, when our Caribbean unity, including, of course, our compatriots in Venezuela and Guyana, are having this trouble, we are here to bring resolution. Now, Prime Minister, we know this is not a new thing. Worldwide, throughout history, we've had accords that have come out of disturbances um, between brothers. Um, what is the likely outcome that you are anticipating after this meeting? I want to answer you in a way in when words which are contained in my letter. We have to be mature. We have to be wise. We have to be understanding. We have to be respectful of everyone. And we have to be calm. And we have to be patient. This is an issue where there was an arbitral award in 1899. It's over a hundred years ago, and before the award, the issue had been simmering. And then there was an agreement in 1966 between Venezuela and the United Kingdom, which was then the colonial power in Venezuela, in um, Guyana, British Guyana as it was then. And the United Nations Secretary General was engaged under that 1966 agreement. And, 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 and then, after some three decades, he said, look, there should be another avenue for the resolution, which was contained in the, in, in the, 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 the agreement of 1966. That is how the matter um, went to the ICJ. And, the International Court of Justice, the, the Guyana wanted to know about the jurisdiction. ICJ said, yes, we have the jurisdiction. Um, Venezuela is not submitting to that jurisdiction. It thinks that you should, they should continue to pursue discussion under the 1966 agreement. I see all of this to show the twists and turns. So the question you ask me, I really, today, I can't answer what is going to be the outcome. What I do know with certainty that it is better for people in conflict to be talking. 
you can resolve misunderstandings. Enjoy provocateurs can create challenges also. And if you're talking and you're respectful and you're mature and understanding and wise, and you take your populations along with you in that particular process, you are less likely to end up with threats of force or the actual use of force. The, nowadays, because we can go instantly and line up at Starbucks or KFC or a popular pizza place or to use instant cocoa or instant coffee, that everything has an immediate resolution. Life, living, and production don't go like that. What we have to do is to be facilitators, be interlocutors, and for the, per the, the, the individuals who are charged with the responsibility of leading the countries in Guyana and in Venezuela, that they talk this thing through without prejudice to whatever what other avenue, non-violent, they are pursuing. I, I think this is important to, 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 to grasp. So if somebody is just simply utilitarian and say, well, if, does, if anything doesn't come out of the meeting, whichever sets of meetings are held, whether on Thursday and subsequently, People just have to continue to talk. No. Any anyone who has studied very carefully um, discussions to end conflicts. There's a prolonged period in which it may appear as though you're not making any progress. And there are several issues on which for them to devise modalities as to how they would proceed. You know, you take the discussions in Paris in the 1970s, early 1970s, to end the Vietnam War. There was a, a long period of time taken on discussing the shape of the table and the seating arrangements for the disputants. <laughs> the point I'm making is that to you in answer we just have to be open, and mature, and wise, respectful, and patient, and calm. And I have, I have confidence that the leaderships in Venezuela and in Guyana are all of these things. But each side has its own sets of national interests to look at and for. In, in relation to a successor to St. Vincent and the Grenadines, in this case Honduras, with which we have a historical link with the Garifuna, um, the president will assume of that great nation will assume the pro tempore presidency of SILAC in early March, but I will be part of the Troika, plus one, the plus one is CARICOM, um, and I'm sure that the, the representatives, the leaders of Guyana and of, of Venezuela would wish me to continue to play a role. And um, if that is required of me, I will continue to play a role in that regard. Okay. <clears throat> Prime Minister, just for the record, because I think this is exactly what you were outlining, but the media outlet that you referred to earlier on, um, out of Guyana, that broke the story about the meeting, that's the Demerara Waves, there, Dennis 
Chabral sent a question, and his yes. question reads, what is the value of the meeting if Guyana is insisting the border controversy must be resolved by the ICJ and Venezuela is maintaining a bilateral solution? Well, I answered you in, in part just now, but there are many things to be addressed. And the matter of the commitment to international law, the commitment to peace, to maintain the region as a zone of peace and not to go to open conflict. All those things are of great importance. And I'm sure when leaders sit down, they will search for and find modalities to continue to maintain a peaceful coexistence. They're neighbors. You can't Ghana and Venezuela neighbors, you can't take up either of them and carry them to Vladivostok. They are where they are. <laughs> and they have to live with one another. There are lots of complexities. I don't really um, presume to know all the ins and outs of every complexity, but I've studied this question. I've read up a lot on it. I've sought a lot of advice on it. I've spoken to the leaders on this. And I see great value for the, for the communication, my brother Cabral. I, and um, I, 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 want, I want you also to look at what is preferable, talking in peace and respectfully than fighting. Despite all the challenges, and, and look, I, 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 I alluded to the fact that the, the, the leaders need to have the wisdom of Solomon, the patience of Job, and the foresight of the, the ancient Hebrew prophets. This is a complicated question, but it is not beyond the leaders to help to save the region from intense conflict which will bring about lots of pain and suffering and will set back this region more than a generation. And that's why I also frame the issue in terms of the interests of our Caribbean and Latin American civilizations. Thank you, Prime Minister, and uh, thank you to the members of the media who are present. We will be distributing copies of the letter that Prime Minister read earlier on for everybody present. And for anybody else who wishes to have a copy from the media, you can send an email to us and uh, we will uh, forward it. Also, we'll be providing details on uh, the meeting as uh, necessary which will take place later this week on Thursday in St. Vincent and the Grenadines. Yes, there's, there's, there's one matter I should raise. You know, there is a meeting of the Organization of American States in Washington scheduled for Monday at which there was a particular resolution. And there is some hope or even expectation that perhaps we can see a, a shelving for a period of time, at least for the time being, of this particular resolution. Of course, we don't have any control over that, but, but that, that is something which I express in a hopeful way. But we must not allow anything to derail these, this initial face-to-face -face dialogue or subsequent ones. 
because not to be talking is very dangerous. And it is, it is something which I believe this matter would weigh in the, man, in, in the way in which I'm presenting it to the people of the Caribbean and Latin America. It will weigh very heavily on, on people's hearts and minds. Um, the war in Ukraine affects us so directly, or profoundly in an indirect way, and therefore direct. Gaza, imagine something on our doorsteps. Okay. Once again, thank you very much to the members of the media for being here, and we apologize one more time for taking you away from your weekend revelry. You can surely get back to that now. Thank you. <laughs>